Let's begin our coverage then of what uh, is going to be the first day of the Democratic Alliance National Congress, all getting ready to select these new leaders and also those key policies that we were talking about. Perhaps more importantly as well, as we go across to uh, my colleague Faith Mangope, who's at uh, the event for us this morning in Midway. And hello to you, Faith. Apart from that, of course, the big question has to be how the DA positions itself uh, for the elections of next year. Morning. A very good morning to you, Gareth. Of course, that is the big question. What is the positioning like ahead of the 2024 national elections that we're anticipating, all of us really, as a country? But of course, today we are anticipating a hive of activity here at the Gallagher Convention Center out in Midran. About 2,000 delegates or so are expected to be in attendance, of course, to elect new leadership within the Democratic Alliance. But to paint us a clearer picture in terms of exactly what this uh, two days actually looks like, we are joined by Verna Horn, who is the spokesperson for the Congress. Anna, thank you so much for your time. A very good morning to you. If there's, the, they always call it the calm before the storm. Gallagher Convention Center is absolutely dead silent at this moment in time. But of course, that is almost to speak about what are we to anticipate a little bit later on today. What does it look like? Yes, between um, 6 o'clock and 8 o'clock, as you said, just under 2,000 delegates will arrive. As a matter of fact, as I arrived this morning, there was already small groups gathering waiting for the six o'clock uh, time to st start the accreditation process. Mm. Uh, from 8.30 onwards, they would, uh, as has become sort of uh, the norm within the uh, DA Congress, is a bit of a show, a bit of a spectacle. Uh, thereafter, uh, there's the uh, p proceedings of the presiding officers informing Congress whether we are for have formed a quorum. We, mm. of course, expect to form a very healthy quorum. Um, and then uh, today, uh, uh, fairly mundane stuff in the form of constitutional amendments. Uh, uh, members, not only delegates throughout the country, had an opportunity to propose amendments to our federal constitution. Mm. Those have been debated before in an online platform, so today we'll, we will only vote on those proposed constitutional amendments. But before that, there's of course the final pitch of the uh, two candidates who will be contesting to be the federal leader sure. for the next three years. Uh, they have a final opportunity to address Congress uh, before the vote, which is only taking place tomorrow. So basically they give their final pitch of why you should be voting for me. And let's talk a little bit about the status quo of the very two contenders. One is the incumbent, of course, is John Steenhazen, and of course yes. the other one is Dr. Mpo Palazze, the former executive mayor of the city of Johannesburg. Yes. Uh, so. Uh, two fairly high-profile candidates, mm. John, as you indicate, the incumbent, uh, Dr. Mpo, who um, really grabbed the attention of South Africans when she was um, elected as executive mayor, in unfortunate circumstances, was removed while uh, trying to steady the ship in, in Johannesburg, and, yeah. and they will be vying, uh, making that final pitch. They've, of course, engaged uh, over a protracted period now with delegates, so I would think most delegates have made up their minds, but maybe they can sway a few still this morning in that final pitch. Of course, and then it's the it's, then it's tomorrow, obviously, with the with the proceedings. Yes. Um, and talk to us a little bit about what we anticipate for for tomorrow, because there's so many variables, and and this is a very defining moment for the Democratic Alliance ahead of the 2024 elections. Mm. Once you've got the stable leadership, and then it's about how do we then, uh, you know, gather the votes and garner. The, the, the trust of South Africans to see whether or not the Democratic Alliance can lead them into a better future, a new dawn as it were. Mm. But let's talk a little bit about what we're expecting tomorrow. Yeah, so the, so the leadership elections will take place between 6 and 8. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's in, uh, in an online form, the, the calculation or tabulation or determination of the outcomes will be fairly quick. Uh, but the announcements will only follow later on uh, mid midday after midday mm -hmm. and in between that and I think that's closely tied of course uh, to who ultimately will become the leader for the next three years Congress will debate and vote on some policy resolutions mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we are not a party where the leader has uh, the final say or the ultimate say about what but policy is the leader, of course, has a very important role to play in the formulation of policy and, and ultimately election manifestos. But this Congress is the supreme policy making structure of the party and about 43 policy resolutions will be 
uh, debated and voted on uh, during the course of Congress as well. And of course the bigger um, kind of scenario here is let's talk about the leadership that goes into 2024 and that how that leadership manages to convince South Africans that this, the Democratic Alliance, is the political party of choice. Is there still concerns and sentiments within the Democratic Alliance about how there's been lots of criticism about the loss of black intellectuals within the, Africa, the, within the Democratic Alliance and also looking at how the man in which they make an exit. Many people feeling as though the DA does not necessarily represent the needs of the poor, the marginalized, the black South African who's had to contend with an apartheid South Africa now into this democratic dispensation and almost like a, almost feeling jagged in, in this uh, the kind of the space. Mm. What's your sentiment on that? Yeah, look, um, we are a complex country with complex uh, problems and issues. Uh, what is quite clear, and, and I think that's what we will be trying to convince uh, more and more South Africans of, is that where we are in government, we, we govern f well, specifically where we, we are in a position to govern with an outright majority. Mm. Uh, they public funds are properly looked after, uh, the lives of everybody uh, is improved within the, the confines of a, 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 dif a difficult uh, financial and economic space in which our governments find themselves selves as well because of the, the, the overall economic space within which South Africa finds it. Uh, so we, we, we hope, of course, uh, whoever is to be the ele elected as the leader, um, to convince more and more South Africans that, that our expertise and our track record of, of looking properly after the limited funds that are available to improve the lives of South Africans must make us part of the solution after the 2024 election. Well, we're definitely going to be speaking, obviously, um, to different stakeholders within this particular Congress. It's a significant Congress because it is indeed ahead of the 2024 elections. And I think more than anything else, Vern, it's about how is it that South Africans get to look at this, have an overview, and say this is the party of choice. More will be coming through uh, from Gallagher Convention Center.